Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. As you can see, I've temporarily mounted the spare on the back of our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso, and that is because I'm about to install two of what's inside this box. This video is guaranteed to brighten your day or light up your night. This is the 50 watt quad size shooter from superbrightleds.com. 5100 lumens, 9 to 32 volts, it's got a cast aluminum housing, and these things are insanely bright. I'm going to be using a pair of these for reverse lights, one mounted on each side of the spare tire. Of course, at 50 watts, these are going to draw significantly more than the original 21 watt reverse lights, so I'm going to be using a signal from the truck to trigger a relay to turn these on. And that means I've got to run a new power source from the battery back to the relay to feed these two lights. To make things a little bit easier up at the battery end, I've added a single inline fuse. This will have a 10 amp fuse in it to power both of the lights. And I've also installed a ground terminal strip so that any of the accessories that I wire up for this flat deck can connect here and I only have to have one wire running to the battery negative. That small lead with the 10 amp fuse in it is somewhat temporary. I will be installing a fuse block up here at a later date to power multiple circuits for the tray back. When I first got this truck, it had a whole bunch of excess wiring on it. I'm not sure what it was for, whether it was for a trailer or for a dump box, but it was quite poorly done. So I removed everything right back to the factory harnesses, which usefully gave me a whole bunch of scrap wire. So I'm going to run a pair of 16 gauge wires from the batteries back to where the relay is going to be mounted to make sure that these lights have enough power. You may recall from the last video when I wired up the tail lights, I elected not to use a relay harness and instead to wire directly to the relay. This time with the reverse lights, I'm going in the opposite direction. And my main reason for that is this is a live circuit off of the battery. It's not switched through the ignition. And when I use a relay, there is always one terminal that is normally closed. So in this case, 87A will be energized all the time, whether the ignition in the truck is on or off. I'm not using that terminal, but it is still here on the relay. By removing the wire from the relay socket the 87A is connected to, when I install the relay, the 87A pin is protected from anything contacting it. There are a number of ways that you can splice two wires together into one connector. Here's what I like to do. I bend them away from each other so that when you pull them together and twist them around each other, they're at a steeper angle and you get more cross and you get a fatter wire. I don't mean you get angry, I mean you get more wire cross. This is now made a significantly thicker and shorter wire because we're going to the next size up connector, this is important. These are 16 gauge wires and this is a uh, 12 to 10 gauge connector. So now if I slip this on here, it's actually going to be snug inside the barrel where it gets crimped. If you twist the wires together without crossing them, you get a much narrower angle, much less twist, and it's actually fairly easy for these to come apart. So bending the wires away from each other before you twist them together is going to get you a stronger mechanical connection before you rely on your crimped mechanical connection. Down underneath the truck again, I am connecting, this is my feed wire here. My negative from the feed wire is going to go straight to the lights. My positive from the feed wire is going to the in on the relay which is pin 30. So straight crimp to pin 30. This now would have, with the fuse in place, 
power going straight to the relay. The output side of the relay is going to go to the two white wires that are feeding the two lights. Output side of the relay is now connected, which only leaves one wire at the relay and at the feed, which is the negative side of the feed going to the negative side of the lights. You notice I've doubled this wire over because again, I'm going from single wire to two wires in a larger connector. Nice snug fit in there. Crimp this one on. And now the only connections that I should have left after routing this wire properly is the connections at the lights and then popping the fuse in and everything should work. These lights do come with nice stainless steel hardware and all that I really have left to do is mount this bracket here, bolt the light in, plug it in and give it a try. This is a pretty thick piece of steel and I hope my drill bit is sharp. My starting point, time to lean on it. I really wish I had a mag drill. This is a lot of steel. For night to be turned into day. These lights are bright. Unfortunately, the only way for the Fuso to go into reverse is to actually be running. So let's just start it up here. Stick it in reverse. So obviously it's a little bit hard to tell how bright lights are when you're in an area of light. So let me try turning off all the lights in my shop and see if I can temporarily bypass this relay underneath here and give you an idea of how bright these really are. As long as I don't fall on my face getting back, I do have a small light underneath here so I can see what I'm doing. But I think you'll agree, these lights are pretty bright. Well, considering the fact that these lights are 12 feet away from me and facing the opposite direction, I think I'll be able to see while I'm going in reverse. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, please give us a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you have any questions about the lights that I installed or how I installed them, throw a question down in the comment section below, and I'll do what I can to answer it. I hope you enjoyed that video. There's plenty more to come, so stick around and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.